So before we actually go to these slides and all of this stuff, I actually remembered on the way driving here that in uh, 95, I joined BCG in 1990 in Los Angeles and I did a lot of different projects as a global strategy consulting company. And in 95, I was a principal, which is one level before partner, and two senior partners called me in the room and said, um, Gilly, we have an idea for you. And I said, what's the idea? I said, you know, you've been working over the past few years on what we call full service networks, on Oracle media servers, a lot of things that most people here most likely don't remember. Uh, we have colleagues in Europe who actually don't know anything about this. Would you mind just kind of cross the Atlantic and spend, you know, three to six months and help them sell some business? And I said, is that real? Is that affecting my career? Is that interesting? And they said, no, no, it's a good, it's a good thing. We, we selected you because you're, you're an expert. I said, fine. I said, where I'm going to live in Europe? He said, you can choose whenever you were, wherever you want. But Paris office really wants you. It took me about 90 seconds to convince my wife at the time that Paris is a good place. Her sister was living in Paris at the time. And we moved to Paris. And I went to the first meeting with a French industrial company. And I came and I said, you know, we start talking about the internet. And they asked me and stopped and say, internet? What is internet? We have Minitel. Anyone you know what the Minitel yes. is? And I said, but Minitel is like a phenomenally $2 billion expensive private network at the slowest speed one can imagine between dedicated terminals that each one of them costs 700 bucks. And I said, it doesn't matter. We drive in France the technology the way we choose. Then I actually went to a, a bank in Belgium. And we started to talk about what the internet will do for financial services. And we said, look, already in the US, as this is early 96, uh, there was a site who started to compare mortgages. And they said, this has never happened here. Why, in Belgium? No way. We, the banks, and there are four banks, control the information. I said, fine. I had a presentation at Fiat, uh, northern Italy, near Torino. And we met the guy who's in charge of media and advertising. And we started to talk about what the internet could do potentially to... Um, uh, you know, cars, and they said they'll never, no one ever buy cars in, in the internet, and we said, yeah, but they might be able to compare information, right? If you can go to consumer reports in the US, you can actually start to compare information. You can imagine this is open for everyone. You can start to, you know, compare your Golf to the Fiat and, you know, start to see comparison in a much lively way. And then I had the most interesting discussion was at Olivetti. Who remembers Olivetti? Yeah. Olivetti was a typewriter business. And in the 70s, a person named Piol actually came and said, you know what, there is this PC innovation taking place in the Silicon Valley. Let's come up with PCs. And actually, they were among the first one in Europe who came with PCs and became a huge success. They were not able to continue it, and I went to meet this Piol. He was sitting in a room almost the half the size of this. This was his office, very dark a lot of cigar smoke. Um, he was sitting, big guy. And as I walk in, he said to me, so you're the American expert, right? I'm, I'm from Israel, but you know, I'm the American expert. I said, yes. He said, so what do you think about Netscape? Netscape was still a private company, didn't go public. And I said, well, it's going to be interesting. And he said, I invested in it, but I'm thinking to shorten it about a month afterwards. It was interesting because anyone who tracked Netscape, it went through the roof and then actually crashed. And if you shortened the stock at the right time, you most likely made as much money as if you bought it when it was. And why I'm telling all these stories, it wasn't so far a long time ago. And I have a question for you. I'd like everyone to raise their hand. Who first time used the internet before 95? Raise your hand. Wow. The Israeli Internet Association. Okay, okay. okay. I should have started with 92, huh? <laughs> Who had a cell phone in 95? In Raise your hand. Okay. Notice. Yeah, those boxes, right? The telephones. Um, interesting. I want now to kind of fast forward 15 years and come to this page. And this is a busy consultant page, so excuse me. But what we see here, what we see here is kind of how this environment is evolving 
because of several forces, computing power, wireless capabilities, social interaction, cloud computing, which actually enables access in remote computing centers rather than on your specific device, and Internet of Things. Let's talk here about a few points which are actually quite stunning. If we look at mobile, there is basically expected by 2015, 16, and we won't argue exactly which year, that there'll be more than six billion end user devices wireless, which is almost the number of the people in the world. By the way, it doesn't mean everyone will have a smartphone, it means few people will have few and some won't have it all, but there's a massive deployment of wireless. And by the way, an emerging market completely bypassed the wireline. There's no more phones. In India, in Africa, completely in China, completely changed commerce, right? So if you're in India and you're in the vegetable market and you want to buy the cheapest tomatoes, you can actually through the phone figure out where it is and actually facilitate commerce in a much more efficient way. Um, Applications are being downloaded at a staggering pace and keep growing and growing and growing. Social, everyone knows what's going on with social. Some, some piece of information here, the number of people using Facebook, using LinkedIn, losing all these mechanisms that create connectivity is just growing and, and actually talking about critical mass, building tipping points and tipping points on top of it. Cloud computing is going to enable actually very low power device to actually use other services and powers in multiple locations and actually create way, way more of connectivity. An Internet of Things. In 97, I left BCG and I went to GE Capital and I ran a global investment group that was investing in technology. And most of the wireless technology at the time were voice. But voice is by definition limited to how many people are and how many words we can speak at a certain pace. Data is not. Each one of us at this point most likely has communication on their devices which are basically pips and data. And imagine that with these QR codes on devices and all these other things right now, your refrigerator can talk with your air condition, can talk with your dog, can talk with your babysitter, can talk with your book, and figure out based on algorithms, based on choices, based on configuration, a lot of activities, and all these basically start to communicate among themselves. And actually the human communication out of it is going to be way smaller, right? Because the human is actually less scalable, it's a number of people. So as we start to think about all of this, it actually leads us to a completely new ecosystem of hardware, software, and services, and some people, right? There's people connectivity, no doubt, right? And the B2B, the mega, anyone will remember the early 2000s, everything was about B2B platform supply chain, which by the way exist and work very well, but no one really talks about them anymore. They become standard of life. The B2C, which is every company in the world putting a website and trying to sell once again, kind of not it exhausted, but actually is kind of there and available. The C2B, a very interesting story about Gap brand, and I'll tell you in a second about it, but it's actually the communication goes from the consumer to the businesses and basically tell them what to do, which product they like, which product they don't like, and actually start to have a voice, right? talking about democratization of business relationship. And then this, the C2C, which is everyone talk about. And what I'd like to bring now is kind of few ideas and few things that actually happen and how it actually could translate to this tipping point concept. Yep. Um, so let's talk about Israel. Let's think about an environment which is actually educated, sophisticated with quite a bit of infrastructure. And let's think about what one can do. And if we think about places like education, we think about small business, we think about non-profit and social impact, and we think about public sector. Each one of those sectors' activities actually can benefit significantly from internet mechanism, from platforms that could be knowledge sharing, so take libraries and put them on, on the internet. It's actually facilitating information. It's when in, I think, 96, 97, IBM put the patent library of the US on the internet it immediately created a whole wave of innovation. Why? Because people actually ac access to what's going on, brought new ideas, new claims. Uh, extended reach. There's some small, small business around the world who actually extended their business like to 80, 90, sometimes 100% of their business is actually global internationally, although they're running a store from Edinburgh 
in Scotland or from some place in Batyam. Uh, from many to many in the collaboration and in the ocean of ideas and from many to few. And from many to few is actually part of what's happening now in Israel with the social movement, right? So many people are basically trying to communicate some simple messages about cost of living and affordability to few people who sit up in Jerusalem, right? And without getting to any political ideas, it's being basically getting the energy and the power and actually reaching a critical mass, which is a tipping point, which goes through those mechanisms, right? So as we think through all the opportunities, I mean, these are the areas I'd like to suggest for us to think through and how we can actually create something which is scalable, get the critical mass, leverage it, so we can actually give more by giving less at a focused way and creating much more 